Welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 90. It's been a little while since I was with you last and main, the main reason for that has been that I was working on my online class. So the class I was teaching was this project from uh, Friesian Whitework. It's the Silk Sampler. And so I ran that as an online class the weekend before last. And it just really took it out of me. I spent most of the week before that just doing all of the videos, like videoing myself, stitching the whole thing or stitching all of the important things on it. And then um, editing all the videos and making them fit for human consumption. And yeah, and then the course ran the weekend before last and I had three people in my pilot class. And I'm pleased to say they really, really enjoyed it. They said the videos were absolutely fantastic. So the way I ran it was that all of the stitch instruction was pre-recorded and the reason why that was was because uh, I just living in a tiny little town I don't know what sort of internet coverage I'm going to get on the day and if things aren't going well then no one's going to be able to see my stitch instructions so I figured if they were pre-recorded then it would mean that everyone could watch it um, and they wouldn't have to be worrying about my bandwidth because it's already all uploaded and then they could also stop me and rewind me whereas that's a bit harder to do that in real life um, so yeah it went really well they suggested that uh, the, the videos were so good that they didn't even really need me um, they did ask me some questions occasionally but not really that many um, and so they suggested that it really could run as a standalone online video self-paced course and so that's what I'm working towards um, I thought it therefore it would be helpful for you to get an idea of the sort of video that I did for it and that's what today's um, thing is going to be in this white threads floss tube I'm going to show you one of the videos which is how to do these clustered eyelets here um, let me bring that in closer so you can see that so that those little eyelets there that are worked together in as a set of four so that's what the video is of now there was also an errata that i found erratum probably erratum i think that would be the single um, and that is that in the book instructions it says that these little eyelets here come on into focus yep that's it uh, worked as four, four thread eyelets but they're not they're actually Algerian eyelets um, so um, in the book you'll need to correct your copy to say Algerian eyelets rather than four thread eyelets now the instructions for Algerian eyelets are certainly in the book so you can definitely do it and if you've already made yours and you used four thread eyelets to do it rather than Algerian eyelets it's not wrong it's just different so don't worry about that don't feel you must take them undone I wouldn't want anyone to do that so I mean it also gives you the choice if you prefer to work four thread eyelets you can work them if you prefer to work work Algerian eyelets certainly you can work them instead so go ahead do whatever you feel um, but yes the book is incorrect and I will make a note of that on my blog so that that comes up when people search for errata for the book so the next thing I'm going to do is show you that video and I hope you find it helpful and enjoyable. After the row that we've just completed, this is the next row to be done here. I don't really need to show you how to work those little stars because they're the same as these ones here they just worked in a different color which is let me check it's three two nine the color that these ones are so it's the really really dark inky blue which is gorgeous actually shows up quite a bit more purple on my screen but it's very dark brown brown blue uh, the thing that I am going to show you how to work are the, is this um, set of eyelets here because they're four in a row so based on how we've done our eyelets before the way I suggest that you do it is say start here because that's a good point to get to nice and easily go around do that section there come here do that there do that there do that there do that there and do that there 
Another way that this could be done is that you could start, say, here. And now, if we were going clockwise, I don't think it really matters. You could go here, 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 and then back in that direction that way if you wanted to. So you can see that there are a number of different paths that you could take. Um, and really, again, it really doesn't matter as long as you're not ending up with doing the inner sections last because that tends to make it more difficult to get to them and to get the um, the needle in between the threads when the ones on the outside are already squished together it makes it harder to get into here so as you can see with this one we started off with the inner sections which makes it quite easy and then you just go back around and do the outside with this you do the outside there but that doesn't affect doing this you do the inside inside outside inside outside inside and outside and that way it works fine as well that is the way I normally do it but you can do the whole of the inside person in the outside so uh, because I've shown you outside inside before I might show you doing the inside one this way and then going back around the outside because that might be something useful to know uh, so I'll just show you on our chart where we need to get to so as always, it's dropping down three threads from the chain stitch above and it's three chains across, which is 12 threads and three down from there. So it also lines up with the bit between the two legs of the bird above, which I don't have here yet. So I can't use that to count off, but you might. So if we come, oh, but we're not actually starting there. We're starting here so we need to come down nine threads because this is six threads long there okay so one two three four uh, that's 12 threads across then one two three four five six seven eight nine that is the hole we need to start at now if you're not sure and you want to count it again there's no harm in doing that so one two three four five six seven eight and nine and that is the right place so as we start stitching this, it's good to have a knot in the thread. I'm just tying that off screen. And as we were coming out here and we're going along here, then the place that I'm going to put my needle in is there. And that means that we will stitch over that thread as we go along. So down three from there and across three, that is the center of that eyelet there. Now this time I think we are actually going in the opposite direction and that's okay. It will sit fine. You can certainly do that. As always, I am using my left hand to do this and you can use your right if you're right handed. Uh, the thread color that I am using this time I think is 945. Yes, sorry, I just had to go and check that. So we come to there and that is the inside of that one there and now we jump across to here. I'm going to have to move that out of the way which is fine because we've already sewn past that point. So we come to the center of the next one and start working around the inside section of the next eyelet. So you can see that there are many different paths that you could use to work these eyelets um, and you might find one that you prefer. Uh, I'm just showing you a couple of options for how you might do it so that if you're not feeling adventurous you don't have to think. That is often the point in coming to a class, you just want to know how someone else does it. And at this point here, that's the top edge of our eyelet. And so it's good to check that we're in the right place compared to our chain stitch. And we are three threads below and we align with the end of those stitches there. So yes, that is in the right place. So that's very encouraging. This 
is looking pretty odd at this stage, isn't it? But it will start to look a lot better soon. Okay, so that's the whole of the inner section done and now we can just go around and do the, all of the outside edge. I started this off with a short piece of thread left over from some stitching before and I wasn't really sure that I was going to have enough but it looks like I will so that's good. So we're just going around the outside edge, always going into the center of the eyelet and coming out two threads along from where you last came out. And that might be in the same line or it might be changing to the next line. So nearly there, this is our last corner. Come along this side and that's our last stitch. Now to finish this off I'll turn over to the back and I'll run it through the back of the stitching. We're on the back now and the last stitch that I put in was this one here. So I think the best way to finish this off is probably just to run the needle under the stitches along the outside edge. Now we're quite close to the edge of the hoop here, which makes it difficult for me to get to. It also makes it difficult for me to get to while the, the camera's on. So I'm going to also take it under there as well, but I think I'm going to need to take it out of the hoop to do that. So um, I'll just have to do that off screen. I've taken it out of the hoop and I'm inserting the needle under there. I'm not going to try and go under the whole of the edge in one go. I think that's just going to be too difficult. So I'll pull it through like that and then do the next section. And it is a little bit difficult to get the needle through, but you can do it. Then I'm going to turn it and go a little bit further. Just because I like things to be probably overly finished rather than underly finished. I don't know if underly is a word we'll use it anyway okay so I think that's enough I've gone around half of it with my underneath the, the back of the stitching and then we turn over and that is our completed I'm trying to get it in the screen that's the completed eyelet if you have any questions about how the course might run then probably the best thing to do would be to wait until I put it up ready for enrollments which hopefully will be quite soon and then if you've got any further questions please ask me because if you've got a question you might find someone else has the same um, question and I need to answer it for them as well and then that's the sort of information that can definitely be added to the website so that people can see that before they sign up. So I hope that that was a great video for you today help and helped you understand how to do those sort of clustered eyelets um, and that gives you an idea of the quality of the videos that you'll be getting in the course and hopefully that means you'll all want to sign up. So thanks very much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.